All right, let's go to the construction sector. This insolvency crisis is huge. New ASIC figures show that insolvencies in the sector have exploded by more than 75% in the last 12 months. And this is because margins are shrinking. There's been the collapse too of larger providers putting strain on smaller companies. Joining me to help understand what's causing it, Russ Stevens, the co-founder of the Association of Professional Builders, and he joins me now. Russ, thank you for your time. Um, I've been following this pretty closely. I know a lot of Australians um, have now got issues with homes that are partly built because of the number of companies that have gone under. Help us under understand what is driving it in your sector, sector in particular. Well, residential builders, they work on high turnover, very low margins, but on fixed price contracts with no escalation clauses. So when the cost of materials and labour goes up, they lose money. It's as simple as that. And the more contracts they sign, the, the more money they lose. So how's the flow on here to, to the average tradies on the side or the subcontractors? How, how is that playing out? Well, yeah, the, uh, the tradies typically bear the brunt uh, when a building company goes into liquidation. These guys, they don't carry large reserves. They, they in a lot of cases, they, they live hand to mouth. So they are typically the worst affected uh, when a building company goes down and they're, they're hit the hardest. But of course, everyone loses, the, uh, the staff, the suppliers, the subcontractors, but also the, uh, the builders themselves, uh, shareholders in their own companies, they lose everything. Look, in all the analysis I've read, there was talk of this COVID boom in residential construction. Now help me out here. I thought that most of the building sites were shut down during lockdowns. Um, so this talk of a boom during that COVID period 20 and 2021, how true is that? Well, yeah, we saw a massive boom uh, start towards the, the end of 2020 and then all the way through 2021. And this was largely due because people had more time on their hands to, to plan a, a new construction or a, a large renovation. But there was also, there was a lot of money washing around in the economy as well. And that was uh, a combination of factors. There were artificially low interest rates coming into play. We also couldn't spend our money on overseas holidays. So there was a lot more cash washing around and all this contributed to a construction boom, which in Australia was fueled by the, uh, the government incentives as well. Uh, gotcha. So it mightn't have actually been, the building mightn't have started in places like Victoria where they had lockdowns, but certainly maybe the approvals, the design process, the early deposits, and in other states, likely the construction. So that's the point you're making, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, the, uh, the demand increased, but uh, the delivery didn't. If anything, the, uh, the delivery was restricted, making it even more difficult. But we probably saw three, four or maybe five times the demand that we would normally see in that period. Wow. So with, with these companies going under, the insolvency point, 75% increase in the last 12 months, if that's where we're up to, we know that there's obviously constraints on housing, people are desperate for homes, and we've got all these migrants about to arrive in Australia, you know, three quarters of a million by the end of the uh, current financial year, so June next year. How on earth do we have homes for people? Yeah, uh, that, that's the challenge. Uh, one thing we need to do is reduce the amount of red tape because there are far too many projects that aren't moving forward either quickly enough or, or at all because of the red tape involved. We're also going to need uh, to see more high density housing projects as well to, to cope with those kind of numbers that are coming into Australia. Just quickly, if I've got a contract with a builder to build a new home or do a reno, I mean, how worried should I be? Yes, you certainly need to be doing your research uh, because new construction is cash flow positive. That generates huge amounts of, uh, of spare cash flow for building companies, which means they can lose money often for years at a time before they actually go under. So it's, uh, you need to do your research and be extremely vigilant, but that is uh, quite difficult to understand the financial 
viability of a company. So looking at online reviews, looking for any negative comments that might relate to delays, that could be a possible red flag. But for consumers, it's extremely difficult to, uh, to distinguish the good guys from the bad guys out there. Gosh, it's not good, is it? Russ, thank you. Russ Stevens there.